Hello everyone. Good morning. Welcome to GCF Northeast online service. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. We continue our study on the Gospel of John. And we are now in chapter 10. And here in our passage, Jesus declares, I am the good shepherd. Now we use the word good in several different ways. Sometimes we speak about something or someone being good morally or inwardly. No? Parang sabi natin, napakabuti, napakabait ng batang yan. No? Siya ay matulungin, siya ay masipag, siya ay magalang, siya ay masino, no? morally, uh, in a moral sense. And sometimes we speak about something or someone being good in quality. Or outwardly, for example, we speak of a good basketball player a good drummer, or a good doctor. We don't necessarily mean that they are morally good, but rather they are good in quality. They are good in what they do. The good basketball player excels in basketball. He has good uh, basketball sense. Now, uh, the likes of Robert Jaworski, or Mon Fernandez in the PBA, or Larry Bird, or Kevin McHale, of the Boston Celtics in the NBA. O oh, alam niyo na, paboritong team ni Pastor sa PBA at sa NBA. Pero, yon ay sa dekada 80. No? The good drummer plays the drums very well. And the good doctor excels in his or her field of practice. And that's the way the word good is used here in our passage. I am the good shepherd. It's a word that means good in quality. It is also a word that means beautiful, handsome, excellent. And so when Jesus calls himself the good shepherd, he means that he is the most excellent shepherd. He is the preeminent shepherd. He is what shepherding is all about. He is a beautiful shepherd, a perfect exa a, 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 an ideal shepherd, a perfect example of what a shepherd should be. Brothers and sisters in Christ, and as we look at how Jesus fulfills his role as the good shepherd, we see even more the wonder and the beauty of our Lord Jesus Christ. And here in our passage this morning, Jesus shows us three ways that he is the good shepherd. Our passage is found in the book of John chapter 10. Verses 11 to 21. John chapter 10, verses 11 to 21. I'm reading from the NASB. Follow along as I read the verses. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming. And leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolves snatches them and scatters the flock. He flees because he is a hired hand and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. And they will become one flock with one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me. Because I lay down my life so that I may take it back. No one has taken it away from me. But I lay it down on my own. I have authority to lay it down. And I have authority to take it back. This commandment I received from my father. Dissension occurred again among the Jews because of these words. Many of them were saying, He has a demon and is insane. Why do you listen to him? Others were saying, These are not the words of a one who is demon-possessed. A demon cannot open the eyes of those who are blind. Can it? This is God's holy and inspired and inerrant word. May he add blessing upon the reading of it. Let us pray. Our gracious, loving Father, who is in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. 
And now, Lord, we turn to your word. We thank you for it. We pray for your blessing. We pray for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Would you please open our eyes that we may see wondrous things out of your law. For Jesus' sake, amen and amen. First, to better understand the purpose of the shepherd in Jesus' day, it is helpful to realize that shepherds or the sheep are or were utterly defenseless. They were totally dependent on the shepherd. Sheep are always subject to danger and must always be under the watchful eye of the shepherd, rushing walls of water down the valleys after a sudden and heavy downpour may wash the sheep away or robbers may steal them or wolves or other wild animals may attack them. I remember David, King David, who was a shepherd boy. He uh, killed a lion and a bear to defend his father's uh, flock that we see in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 36a. You, your servant, has killed both the lion and the bear. Now driving snow in winter, blinding dust, burning suns during summer, and long lonely hours each day, all these the shepherd had to endure patiently for the welfare of the flock. Now, in fact, shepherds were frequently in grave danger, and there would be times that they would offer their lives, that they would die to protect the flock. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And here we see uh, three ways, three reasons why he called himself the good shepherd. First, in verses 11, 13, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters the flock. He flees because he is a hired hand and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd is the fourth I am declaration of the seven declarations of the Lord Jesus Christ recorded only in the Gospel of John. In John chapter 6, he said, I am the bread of life. And then in chapter 8, he said, I am the light of the word. Last week, we studied he when, uh, studied uh, John chapter 7, verse 10, verse 7. He said, I am the gate. I am the door of the sheep. And now, here in our passage, he says, I am the good shepherd. These I am proclamations point to the unique divine identity and purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nang kanyang sinabi siya ang pintuan ng mga tupa, mga kapatid, agad-agad na sinabi niya, siya ang uh, mabuting pastol. Apat na beses sinabi niya that he will lay down his life. At doon sa apat na yun, dalawa ang sinasabi niya uh, here in our passage that he lays down his life for the sheep. And then, yung huling dalawa, nilagyan niya ng emphasis, nilagyan niya ng diin, that he lays down his life and he's going to take it back again. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the gate, I am the door of the sheep, he gives life. Jesus spoke about giving life to the sheep through spiritual, eternal, abundant life. But when Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, he gives his life for the sheep. He gives his life for the sheep. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the primary thought of the passage this morning. When Jesus spoke about this, he, yes, he will speak about other aspects of being a good shepherd, but... The main idea that he keeps coming back to is he lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He dies so that they may live. There was a definite reason and purpose for, for Jesus laying down his life 
No, every one of us, we should have faced God's righteous, eternal judgment. But Jesus intervened with His blood, with His own blood, to pay the debt on our behalf. There is no more horrible death known to mankind than that of crucifixion. Mga kapatid, wala na pong mas hihigit pa, mas malupit na kamatayan o kaparusahan, kundi ang maipako sa krus. Pero alam natin, bago ipako sa krus ang Panginoon, siya po ay binugbog, siya po ay nilatigo, siya po ay, kumbaga, parang sila naglaro ng pitik bulag. Naaalala niyo po yung laro ng mga bata, pitik bulag, nakatakit na ganyan, tapos pinipitik, ilan to? Sa Panginoon, siya po'y nakapiring at siya'y sinasampal at tinatanong, sino ang sumampal sa iyo kung ikaw ay Diyos? Hindi lamang po yun, siya po ay pinagdudoraan, hindi lamang ng isang tao, hindi lamang ng tatlong tao, hindi lamang ng limang tao, pinagdudoraan siya sa kanyang mukha. At pagkatapos noon, mga kapatid, siya'y pinutungan ng koronang tinik, hindi lamang po ipinatong yung koronang tinik, ito po ay pinukpok sa kanyang ulo upang sa ganoon ang mga tinik ay bumaon doon sa kanyang scalp. Lord, ang, ang, ang ating Panginoon, He had to endure all these things because He loved you and me. Yet beyond this, He also endured the awesome wrath of the Almighty God against all sin. No, when Jesus was on the cross, He was literally, He literally became sin and was judge in our place. At tanging ang Panginoong Jesus lamang ang siyang makakagawa nun na siyang tagapagligtas sapagkat isa sa mga qualifications ng isang Savior ay dapat siya kauri natin at pangalawa, dapat wala siyang bahid ng sakit na, uh, na kanyang uh, uh, itutubos. Mga kapatid, ang sakit na yun ay kasalanan. Ang, ang Panginoong Yesus ang nabuhay lamang sa mundong ito na walang kasalanan. Kaya siya ang ating tagapagligtas. At sabi nga po ni Paul in 2 Corinthians 5.21, He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Mga kapatid, parang nagkaroon ng exchange gift. Ang ating mga kasalanan ay inilagay, ibinigay sa Panginoon. At ang Panginoong Yesus, ang kanyang katwiran ay ibinigay sa atin. Kaya nga po, ang Diyos Ama, kapag siya titingin sa atin, hindi niya tinitignan kayo o si Pastor Boyet, nakatingin siya kay Heso Kristo. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Eh, sino po ba itong mga tupang ito? Ito po ang mga ibinigay ng Diyos sa kanya sa ating Panginoong Jesus. In John chapter 10, verse 29, My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. The sheep are those whom the Father has given to Jesus Christ. Their names were written in the book of life before the foundation of the world. It was to them that Jesus came to die to redeem us. He did not fail in His mission. Kaya nga po, ito pong katotohanan ito ang siyang magpapatibay sa atin na kung tunay na tinanggap mo si Jesus bilang iyong Panginoon at, tag- Panginoon at tagapagligtas, then isa ka sa kanyang mga tinubos na tupa. At He promises that He will keep you unto eternity. Paano ko malalaman, Pastor? Eh, buhay pa ako. Paano ko malaman na ako ay saved? So, 20 years from now, kung doon ako mamamatay. Ang sabi po ni Pedro, mga kapatid, that you have been protected by the power of God and tiyak that you will receive that inheritance of salvation. Mga kapatid, by this priceless sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, He deserves the title, the Good Shepherd. Now, in verses 12 to 13, Jesus contrasts himself to the religious leaders of the day, the Pharisees. Look at verse 12. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters the flock. Jesus is contrasting his own sacrificial love 
and care for his sheep with the false shepherds of Israel, whom he called the hired hands, who are just after their own welfare, welfare who cared for themselves, who only cared for themselves. The hired hand, brothers and sisters in Christ, is not the shepherd. The sheep do not belong to him. Wala po siyang personal na interest. Wala siyang pagmamalasakit doon sa mga tupa sapagkat hindi, hindi kanya ang mga tupang yun. Ang kanya lang iniisip ang kanyang sahod na tatanggapin. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is also interesting. The laws of the land set uh, out the responsibilities of the shepherd when it came to wolves and the sheep. No? The responsibilities of the hired hand when it came to the sheep and wolves. No? The hired hand had a legal responsibility to protect, to defend the flock against one wolf. But if there are two or more wolves, then they count it as an unavoidable accident. In other words, ang sinasabi po nila, ito po ang kanilang hinayar na assistant o tagapag uh, ta assistant o ta uh, na magpapastol o magtitingin sa mga tupa. No? Siya po ay legally, no? meron siya po ang uh, responsibilidad na protektahan yung kanyang kawan no? kapag meron pong lumusob na isang asong gubat, isang lobo. Subalit, kung ang lumusob ay dalawa at higit pa na asong gubat, siya po ay walang magagawa at ang sinasabi po nila, yun po ay mapapalaya siya kung merong damage. Wala po siyang pananagutan. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the hard hand flees. He runs away from the wolves, first of all, because he does not own the sheep. He runs away because he doesn't care. He doesn't love the sheep. In verse 13, he flees because he is a hired hand and does not care about the sheep. Hindi po niya pag-aari yung mga tupa. Kaya wala siyang pagmamalasakit. Wala po siyang pag-ibig. He doesn't risk his life for them. In contrast, Jesus as the good shepherd voluntarily really lays down his life. Not only he risks his life, he lays down his life for the sheep. So the difference between the hard hand and Jesus Christ is that Jesus owns the sheep because he bought it with his own blood. The first reason that Jesus is the good shepherd is that he lays down his life for the sheep. Secondly, Jesus knows his sheep. We, that, we, we see that in verses 14 to 16. I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Jesus knows his sheep and those who are not. We can never know for certain who is saved or not. Although Jesus said, by their fruits you'll know them. Alam po ng Panginoon kung sino ang kanyang totoong tupa at sino yung nagkikristya-kristyanuhan lamang. Alam ng Panginoong Isus yung tapat na tumanggap sa Kanya bilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas o nagpapakitang tao lamang. He is just putting up a show on the outside. Jesus knows His sheep and His sheep know Him. To know means to, to be uh, in deep intimacy, personal knowledge. Uh, it, it speaks about love. No, Jesus and his sheep enjoy a relationship of deep trust and intimacy. Alam po ng Panginoong Isos, alam po ng Panginoong Jesus, sino po ang tunay na mga tupa. Sapagkat ito pong mga tunay na tupa, tinanggap siya bilang Panginoon at tagapaglitas. Ito pong mga tupang tinubos, kinikilala si Jesus na kanilang na kanyang Panginoon tagapagligtas at matalik na kaibigan. Alam niyo po, the individual sheep in a flock all look alike. 
for an untrained eye. Nasubukan nyo na po ba? Even watching na po, uh, a, a film na meron pong kawan ng mga tupa. Ma-identify nyo po ba yung mga tupa? Di po ba? Ang hirap. But the good shepherd, uh, we know that he knows the, the sheep by name. He knows them personally, intimately. At siguro pagkasama po natin ang pastol at nandudun tayo tumitingin ng kawan, sabi niya, nakikita mo yung nasa gitna. Ah, yung tupang yan, uh, yan si tupang piki. No? Yung katabi niya naman, ay yun naman si tupang bulag. No? Nasabit yan dun sa mga, sa mga tinik, dun sa bush, yung kanyang isang mata. Dun sa likod nila, yun si tupang uh, balat. No? Meron yung balat sa puwet. No, yun naman si Tupang Sakang, no? The, the good shepherd knows his sheep by their perhaps their physical defects and their peculiarities. He knows them, brothers and sisters in Christ, observing all of them. The chief shepherd knows their weaknesses. He knows their failings, their concerns. And He watches over them with a sympathetic understanding and a discerning love. And with infinite concern, He notes their conflicts, their disappointments, their discouragements, their defeats, their doubts, even their unbelief. He knows their fears. And their trials. He knows them all. Brothers and sisters in Christ. And then he swiftly, immediately comes to their aid. Jesus even compares their knowing and being known to his relationship with God the Father. Jesus doesn't mean that our relationship with him is as intimate as his relationship with the Father. That would be impossible. In verse 15, Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. The, pa- the Father and the Son know each other perfectly. And there are no barriers between them. Of course, the Lord Jesus Christ knows us perfectly. Pero hindi po natin kayang tumbasan yung pagkakilala sa atin ng Panginoon. At hindi po tayo pwedeng maging gadap sa pagkakilala sa Panginoon. Sapagkat meron po tayong limitasyon bilang mga tao, meron tayo ring mga kasalanan. So the comparison means that our relationship with the Good Shepherd is mutual as His relationship with the Father is mutual. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus knows all your needs, your deepest needs. And He knows exactly how to care for you. Jesus knows everything about you. He knows your deepest thoughts, your silent longings, your private victories, your secret shames. He knows them all and He loves you. He loves you so much that He died for you. Meron pa ho bang masihigit pang pastol sa ating Panginoong Jesus? na nagsasabing kilala niya tayo at alam niya ang bawat pangalan ng, ng pangalan ng bawat isa? Meron pa bang hihigit doon sa pastor that He knows us intimately? He knows our deepest needs? but nagahanap pa po tayo ng ibang pastol? Pastol na nagsasabi sa atin na ganito mo dapat patakbuin ang buhay mo, na unahin mo ang kayamanan, unahin mo ang pleasure ng mundong ito. Bakit doon tayo nakatingin? Ba't yun pa ang hinahanap natin at hindi natin sundin ang tunay na pastol, ang mabuting pastol? Bakit, mga kapatid? And look at verse 16. He says, And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Jesus knows his, knows his sheep who are under His care and also those who will be under His care in the future. Mga kapatid, malinaw po na pinapakita sa atin ng Panginoon, meron pang mga, pas, mga tupa na darating. No? In the historical context, He is talking about the Gentiles. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ came for the nation of Israel, but they rejected Him. And so he turned to the Gentiles and now salvation is not only for the Jews. It is for anyone who put his faith 
in Jesus Christ. And so Jesus was speaking of this great Gentile mission of the church. That's the immediate context of our passage. Of our passage. But Jesus' words can further be applied. In another sense, Jesus is talking about all these people who, has, who haven't ca came to know Him as His Lord, as, as their Lord and Savior. And He wants to gather them and bring them into His flock. And to extend that metaphor even farther and bring it directly to the church, Jesus as many other sheep that are not part of the church. There are sheep there in our neighborhoods, in our streets, in our barangay. There are other sheep even in our own home. And Jesus wants to gather them and bring them into his flock. Now, I want you to notice with me that how Jesus uses the present tense. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold, that are not of this fold. Jesus knows. Alam po ng Panginoong Jesus, meron po siyang mga tupa na hindi pa kumikilala sa kanya. Pero tinawag na po niya na ito ay nasa kanyang kawan, tinawag na niya kanyang mga tupa. They are already his sheep. Ito po ang konsepto ng election that we can find throughout Scripture. And there is an interesting parallel in the book of Acts, specifically in Acts chapter 18, where the Lord Jesus Christ speaks to uh, Paul in a vision about the city of Corinth. Alam niyo po kasi si Paul, takot na takot po siya doon. Meron pong mga threats sa kanyang buhay. At ito po ang sinabi ng Panginoon in Acts 18 verse 10, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to harm you. For I have many people in this city. There are many people in the city who will come to faith in me. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. That means Jesus has many people in this barangay too, in this uh, West Fairview, in Greater Lagro. In Novaliches, there are many people who will come to faith in him. And that's what he's saying to Paul. Magpatuli ka lang. You share the gospel. You preach. Andya dyan sila. Naghihintay. Na sila ay ma masheran ng gospel. And how do we identify the sheep? How do we identify these other sheep? Remember, they are those who listen to Jesus' voice. Well, the problem today, ito po ang problema. Napakarami pong boses naririnig ng mga tao. Boses na nagsasabi si Jesus ay tao lamang. At tiyak, pag yun, naniwala doon, hindi po siya ligtas. Di ba? Wala siya doon sa tunay na kawan ng ating Panginoon. Marami may mga boses na nagsasabi, maraming daan, maraming pinto patungo sa Diyos. So kahit anong reliyon, okay lang. Meron din mga boses na nagsasabi na hindi totoo ang Diyos. Hindi totoo si Jesus. O hindi sapat yung kanyang ginawa. Kailangan dagdagan mo pa. Kailangan paghirapan mo pa para ikaw masay. Meron din boses ng inconvenience na sinasabi na kapag ikaw ay tumanggap sa Panginoon, ay yung agenda mo sa buhay mo masisira kasi marami ng bawal. Hindi mo may enjoy ang buhay. My friends, We learn who Jesus' Jesus' sheep are by calling out to them through the preaching and sharing of the gospel. And those who hear and respond are the Lord's sheep. They are the other sheep. We are Christ's voice. And we must share the gospel in our home, in our neighborhoods, in our barangay, in our community, and beyond in our school, in our workplaces. His sheep will hear His voice and respond. And then He says, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. This is the ultimate goal of Christ's mission. Jesus is speaking about the unity of the body of Christ. Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross does not only reconcile us with God, but it reconciled us with one another, with each other. And so the first reason that Jesus is a good shepherd because He lays down His life for the sheep. The second 
The second, He knows His sheep. And lastly, Jesus conquers death for the sheep in verses 8, 17 to 18. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life so that I may take it back. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it back. This commandment I receive from my Father. Alam po natin, a good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Di po ba? Subalit, kung a common shepherd, he lay down his life for the sheep. Pagkatapos nun, paano na? Sino na magmamalasakit sa kanyang kawan? Hindi na niya mamamahal ito. Hindi na niya maalagaan. Hindi na niya matitignan. Patay na siya. But not so with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that was he, that what was he was saying here in this verse. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life so that I may take it back. Now, verse 17 is really difficult to understand. But Jesus did not mean that he earned the Father's love because he laid down his life for the sheep. No, we must not conclude that his willingness to lay down his life and take it back was necessary in order to win his father's love. No, did Jesus, through his death, burial, and resurrection, won his father's love? No, absolutely not. The Father, even before the foundation of the world, has always loved His Son. In John 17, 24, Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. If this is not what He meant, what did he mean when he said, verse 17, For this reason the Father loves me. Jesus' willing sacrifice prompted the eternal Father's love or the Father's eternal love in a fresh way. For example, I have loved Ineng for more than 34 years. In fact, we have celebrated our 34th wedding, wedding anniversary last week and praise God for that. But perhaps, you know, or for example, she did something that reflected her love for me last week. And my love for her welled up in a fresh way. And I said, I love you for doing that for me. The love was there before that action. But her deed called forth my love for her once more. This was the case. Here in verse 17, Christ is simply acknowledging the fact that the Father is not an uninterested party when He laid His life down and, and in order to take His life up again. But rather, the Father was fully engaged and involved and thoroughly excited and pleased about what His Son was about to do. And in, in, in speaking of his father's love, in what he is going to do in verse 17, Jesus now links his approaching death to a future resurrection or with his future resurrection. Christ died in order that he might rise again. And he needed to do this. This was necessary so that he might ascend to the Father and subsequently offer through the outpouring of the Spirit the gift of life to anyone who will put his faith in him. If Christ had not risen from the dead, these things would not have taken place. Christ's resurrection is very important in the gospel message. Without the resurrection of Christ, the death of Christ would have been wasted. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith also is in vain. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 17, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still 
in your sins. So in verse 17, Jesus is prophesying His resurrection. This prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ is mind-boggling. Isipin niyo po, nasabihin ko sa inyo, bukas ako ay mamatay. Mamamatay voluntarily or naturally. At pagkatapos ng ikatlong araw, ako ay mabubuhay muli. Hindi po ba't, ano, kayo po ba'y maniniwala? Ang sasabihin niyo, dali na natin si pastor doon sa mental hospital. At tama lang. Sino po ba ang magsasabi noon? Isa lamang isang hangal ang lamang lam ang, ang magsasabi noon. O isang baliw. And Jesus did not just prophesy His uh, uh, resurrection in verse 17. There are many accounts in the Bible. Let me just read to you one account from the Gospel of Mark. In Mark chapter 9, verse 9. As they were coming down from the mountain, He gave them... <coughs> I'm sorry. He gave them orders not to relate to anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man rose from the dead. You see, there are many different reasons for believing the gospel message. But one of the reasons, brothers and sisters in Christ, is the incredible boldness of the Lord Jesus Christ predicting His resurrection. Natupad po ba ang prospesya ng Panginoon? Of course, makikita po natin to iba't iba pong mga saksi doon po sa Gospels at pati na po sa Epistles. In fact, he is so successfully uh, he, he so successfully pulled it off that uh, his small band of disciples going forth in the power of the Holy Spirit and based on their personal experience with the living Lord, has turned the world upside down with this very simple and glorious message that Christ, through His death, burial, and resurrection, had not only won victory over the grave, but also won a victory over sin itself. But Jesus did not simply say that He'll die and then rise later. He said more than this. For this reason, the Father loves me because I laid down my life so that I may take it back. The voluntary nature of Christ's death in verse 17 was stressed in order that the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ would understand that Christ was not nailed on the cross because his enemies, because the sinful man overpowered him. No. He was nailed on the cross because he personally chose to be nailed on the cross. At ano po ang katibayan nito? His resurrection, brothers and sisters in Christ. Certainly, Christ, if Christ was able to take his life back up again, and then certainly no one would have been able to take his life from him if he himself did not allow them to do so. Di po ba? Kung ang Panginoong Jesus kaya niya pong kunin muli ang kanyang buhay, di Kung ganon, wala pong pwedeng kumuha ng kanyang buhay, liban na lamang na kanya po itong pinayagan. So the voluntary nature of Christ's death, which was confirmed by His resurrection, was again emphasized in verse 18. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it back. This commandment, I received from my Father. Brothers and sisters in Christ, and then predicting His death and resurrection resulted in a division among His listeners that we see in verses 19 to 21. Dissension occurred again among the Jews because of these words. Many of them were saying, He was a demon and is insane. Why do you listen to Him? Others were saying, These are not the words of the one who is demon-possessed. A demon cannot open the eyes of those who are blind, can it? Brothers and sisters in Christ, truth will always divide. Truth will always divide. 
but it is not truth's fault. It is not truth's fault. But there will always be, there will always be a divided response to the truth according to the hearts of men. That's why in verse 20, many of them were saying, He has a demon and he's insane. Why do you listen to him? Now, tingnan niyo po yung double accusation. Siya po ay inaalilihan ng demonyo at siya po ay isang baliw. Mga kapatid, ang kanilang paniwala noon ay kapag ang isang tao ay baliw, ito po ay dahil sa mga demonyo sa kanyang katawan. No? And uh, so they even told others, why do you listen to him? Hindi po ba ito ang ugali ng maraming mga tao? No, so, hindi sila kontento sa kanilang unbelief nagdadamay pa ng iba sinasama pa yung iba and that's what the Jews are doing pero hindi po lahat maniwala nireject nila yung accusation na to. and that was what we have seen in verse 21 these are not the words of one who is demon possessed a demon cannot open the eyes of those who are blind can it? they objected to the accusations Jesus did not speak as a madman. His words were full of grace, of wisdom, of authority, and power. They not look only at His words, but also His works. Kaya nga nang tinanong nila, di ba, ang demonyo ba nakakapagpagaling uh, ng isang bulag? No? Of course, alam nila, hindi. Sapagat ang demonyo, ang, ang, ang gusto lang niyan ay ikaw ay masaktan at hindi ikaw ay matulungan. And so both Jesus' words and His works showed he was not demon-possessed and mad. Ang tanong, ito po bang mga uh, naniwala na ito na nagsasabi sa kanya, no? yung nag-reject ng accusation ng mga Pharisees, were they already Christ's followers or disciples? No, but they certainly were moving in the right direction. So what are the implications of this passage for us? First, it's not what you know but who you know. The Jewish leaders that Jesus was addressing here in this passage were among the most highly educated people in their culture. Alam po nila ang scriptures from cover to cover. Subalit yung kaalaman nila po yun ay namiss nila ang Messiah. Hindi po ito nagamit. The Messiah was the Messiah was standing in front of them, but they miss it. They miss it. In fact, ang hinana po nila ano ang violations ng ating Panginoong Jesus doon sa man-made rules ng Sabbath. Ito nakita nila ang kanyang pinagaling, isang bulag. Marami pong saksi, kilala yung bulag. Tinawag pa yung mga parents. Even yung bulag, sinabi, ako dating bulag, ngayon nakakakita, hindi nyo pa rin matanggap. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the same thing happens today. Things haven't changed in the last 2,000 years. No, ganun din po tayo. Pinipilit po natin na itong mga salita ng Diyos, tinitignan natin, ito ba ay totoo sa sinasabi ng siyensya? Kay maipuprove ba to sa science? And that happens. And that, that happened before. No, they try to evaluate. They try to analyze the Bible no, in a purely academic way. But it wouldn't work, brothers and sisters in Christ. And so, it is my prayer that we need to know Him more intimately. We must keep on reading the Word of God, pondering, meditating on it. And that will lead us to the second implication. Impl Implication, knowing Jesus as my shepherd requires obedience. If we want Jesus to be our good shepherd, it's not enough to just listen to Him. Ano po? We must follow Him. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you know what? Binigyan po tayo ng Panginoong Jesus ng isang simple test to check, to evaluate kung talagang uh, Jesus ay ang ating Good Shepherd. Ang sabi po sa John 14, 27, Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Ang sinuman, 
sumusunod sa aking mga utos. Ayun ang nagmamahal sa akin. At ang nagmamahal sa akin ay mahal ng aking ama. At aking mamahalin at aking pang ihahayag ang aking sarili sa kanila. Gusto niyo po ba yun, that God will re- Jesus will reveal more of Himself to you? Then you must know His commandments. Keep them. Obey them. You cannot just obey them if you don't know them. Brothers and sisters in Christ, each of us has a shepherd. Each of us has a ruling, guiding force in our lives. For some of us, it may be a person. It may be a principle or a destructive addiction. Or we are our own shepherds. We run our own lives. We seek our own master. Or we seek to be the master of our souls. We seek to be the master of our own destinies. Honestly, who is your shepherd? Who is your shepherd today? Does he really care about you? Does he lead you in greener pasture besides still waters? Does he restore your soul? Does he lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake? Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ described himself as the good shepherd, possessing immeasurable goodness and perfect love. He is the, sh- the shepherd who chose to be the sacrificial lamb to pay the penalty, the price that our sins deserve. And so I am closing with the words of the prophet Isaiah, found in Isaiah 53 verses 5 to 6. And I invite you to consider whether this is the person whom you are going to follow with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength for the rest of your days. Isaiah 53 verses 5 to 6, But He was pierced for our offenses. He was crushed for our wrongdoings. The punishment for our well-being was laid upon Him, and by His wounds we are healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray, Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the wrongdoing of us all to fall on him. Amen. Let us pray. Our loving Father, thank you for your word. And indeed, Jesus has shown us that he is the good shepherd laying down his life for us. And thank you that he knows us intimately, very well, personally. He even knows us by name. And praise God that He has conquered death for us. Lord, indeed, He is the Good Shepherd and may we follow Him and imitate Him. May we be a church, Lord, that gives our time to help others just like the Good Shepherd did for us. May we be a church that sacrificed our resources to serve others, just like the Good Shepherd did for us. May we be a church that does nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, just like the Good Shepherd did for us. May we be a church that does all things in humility, counting other persons, other people more significant than ourselves, just like the Good Shepherd did for us. May we be a church that looks after the interests of others just like the Good Shepherd did for us and just like the blind man who encountered Jesus outside the temple. May we be a worship that worships the Good Shepherd who willingly laid down His life for us on the cross. Amen and amen.